So basically what I'm doing is yesterday or last night Ed and I stopped canning and there's still I don't know um, two batches <laughs> left to do so I put them in the refrigerator which you can do with your jars you can even freeze jars as long as you don't pack them too full so I gotta go over here and take them all out of the fridge so that they can start getting that chill off of them and then I will do a cold pack basically which they're already packed and they're already cold so I've got that part down it's kind of dark and y'all can't see very well just trust me hopefully I'm not gonna walk into a spider web it's like 30 something degrees out here and I'm wearing my shorts <laughs> So let's go back to the house and I'll come back in a couple hours when these things are no longer feeling like they've been in the freezer. So I'm going back over to the house now. It's cold out here. It's very cold out here. Okay. So check that out. Those are my grow lights coming through my bedroom window. <laughs> you see that purple? That's my grow lights. What do you do when you have some leftover chicken thighs and chicken breasts? These are all boneless and they're chopped kind of a square like. A couple cans of Rotel. And some taco seasoning. We make spicy taco chicken. This is spicy taco chicken. Now yesterday you kind of saw what I was putting in there and if you did, these here, this is cilantro and you don't really even have to put the cilantro in it like if I was doing it in a slow cooker. I would literally just put chicken chunks down at the bottom, boneless, skinless preferred. Um, and then the tomatoes, green chilies on top of that and then sprinkle some taco seasoning, which you can't see, which I guess I could open this up for you since it's not cooked yet, and show you. Just like that, there's taco seasoning on top of that, and then, yeah, it's just as simple as that. And if you were putting it in the slow cooker, you would pretty much cook it in there until you could shred the chicken, and then it'll be done. And if you're putting it in the canner, which I'm going to be doing, and that's gonna be something kind of weird because I'm putting the chicken in the canner, so I'm gonna do two batches. This stuff is the stuff from the roast vegetables that I did um, in my other canning video. This is still the same uh, week, so <laughs> so you're gonna kind of see two things. What you don't want to put do is put something that's really strong flavored like taco spicy chicken <laughs> and with something that's a little more savory flavored because those flavors will kind of meld together inside the canner yeah you really don't want to do that so i'm going to do two separate loads i'm going to finish up this load and then i'll show you how i do the uh, spicy taco chicken which is pretty much the same way because meat is the one that takes the longest to cook if I was doing other um, canning projects, what I would do is I take the longest time for whatever the ingredient is that I put in there and I'll use that time instead of like, let's say if I wasn't doing any meat and I was just doing carrots, the carrots don't take that long to do. So I'd use the time for carrots because I'm just doing carrots. If I was doing carrots and onions, all of a sudden I have a longer cook time, so I'd use the time for onions. And because there's meat in here, 75 minutes for a pint. These are cold packed, which I took them out of the fridge, let them lose their chill so that they just feel kind of room temperature. And they're just gonna go straight into the canner. The canner's not heated up at all. In fact, you know, I'm gonna take the lid off and I ran some water earlier and I'm just going to 
Um, make sure that, I mean, I know my water hasn't evaporated, but you know, you just want to make sure you got enough water in there. So that's what I'm going to do. And if I need to add a little bit more water for whatever reason, then I'll add some water and we'll get started. All right, so my pot is not on, it's not hot, nothing's hot, nothing's on, and I'm just going to go ahead and add my jars. I'm just going to go ahead and add my jars, and then I'm going to put my little stacker on top, and then add my next layer of jars, and then together, after I latch um, my lid on, that's when I'm going to turn the heat up very slowly. At first, I'm going to turn it up midways, maybe, you know, between like a zero and five. And I'm just going to let them warm up together. But yeah, you want to start very slowly because everything's cold. So it'll take me an extra maybe 10, 15 minutes to really get going. Of course, that won't affect you at all. And goes my meat. Now, if you um, were hot packing it, like let's say I did this batch yesterday while everything was still pretty warm, then this would be, this canner would be turned on um, maybe a, a little bit hotter or warmer than what the meat is because I can do that in progressive stages and the jars won't crack. I've been doing this long enough to kind of, you know, know about when that, that threshold is hit, so I'm, I'm pretty good at that. Just for kicks, and because I had a little bit left over, I'm just going to go ahead and put broth, uh, bouillon, carrots, and onions in there. I had a little bit of carrots and onions left over, and I could just, you know, eat that with some scrambled eggs or something like that, but nah, not me. You know me. not a perfect circle is it all my latches are on yep closing opposite ends gonna turn it on and just start warming everything up together three seems to be pretty good all right, I'm gonna turn it all the way up and let's get this party started. Now, some people say, oh, it doesn't take all that. Yeah, they'll, they'll say it doesn't take all that, that you don't have to wait this long um, when you're cold packing. But you gotta, you gotta keep in mind <laughs> that I had jars that I took out of the refrigerator, so the food was chilled, the jars were chilled, they weren't just room temperature that needed to be brought up to heat, they were cold cold. Um, it has taken less than 30 minutes in the past to do that um, with jars that I just cold packed and let the meat um, come to room temperature on the um, counter. So, just letting you know. It takes all that for me to feel comfortable with what I'm doing. And you be my guest if you want to speed up the process of heating up your jars. You know, I, I, I'd like to keep the food I labored so hard for. I'll see you when I get to 10 PSI because no matter what kind of meat that you're making, if you got meat in there and you're at 1,000 or below in altitude, you're going to be doing this at 10 PSI for 75 minutes once your timer starts. But until it hits 10 on this dial, I'm not going to turn on my timer. So it'll be an hour and 15 minutes with pint jars and for quart jars or even the um, one and a half pint jars, you have to use your uh, 90 minutes. All right, so I've bent it now long enough that I'm, I'm pretty sure that I've got enough pressure. I don't have any 
blockages. I'm just going to go ahead and put this tin on there. And we're going to let our pressure go up to 10. assure you in just a few minutes it's already rising to two and a half and I just heard something pressurize or depressurize I'm not sure which <laughs> but uh, none of that matters right now what matters is not the tops popping because it's also going to happen after um, I take the pressure uh, uh, gauge off the weighted gauge I'm going to take that off you know after it's over with so that doesn't matter what matters is is that my pressure is going up and I'll show you when it gets to 10 because that's when we start counting if you already started your timer just turn it off and wait until you get to your uh, desired PSI, which if you have a weighted gauge is 10, if you have a dial it's 11, if you're using um, the altitude over a thousand feet, then you're actually going to do 15 if it's a weighted gauge and 16 if it's not. something else that you might want to think about if you have a lot of canned food and you're going to move and you know you're gonna to have to move a lot of that canned food with you think about the altitude that you're going to if, even if you're dreaming about your homestead in the future if you know next year you want to be in the mountains make sure that that altitude is whatever it is and look it up before you can your food and get ahead of the game you might overcook your food down here but at least you know that when you're going up those mountains you're not going to be popping seals <laughs> as you go that's something to think about because that does happen it's getting there pretty fast Just a little bit above 10, so that's what that little 
little shake, 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 shake he is. So we're going to see if we can't just like turn the heat down just a little bit and make that a little quieter. There, you can hear that better. Sorry, I had the fan on. I forgot. But yeah, because it's not even at 11, it just barely counts to 10. I'm going to go ahead and, and try to get that a little quieter. And the way I do that is to bring the temperature and the pressure back down. You just turn the uh, heat down on your element. If you're using gas heat, then you would turn that down um, as well. And you kind of manage it that way. Gas heat is a little bit easier to manage once you get it. Gas is pretty steady, it's straight flame, whereas with the electric element, um, it's more or less the temperature that's ambient outside, you know, or whatever, it's still not down yet. All right, it's still up a little bit high. It's still up a little bit high and it's actually going higher. And that's probably got more to do with the fact that I've got uh, my jars heated up so I can do a hot pack with these last few and not have to wait two hours to get the water ready. All right, it's going down a little bit. But yeah, if you have other things on the stove, it's not recommended because you won't be able to control the heat as easy. But you see what happens when it goes higher than what it's supposed to with the weighted gauge, you lose a lot of steam. And that's your water. You don't want to end up with a dry canner before your time is up. All right. So it's about to stop. And now it's at 10. And that's pretty much what you do is you keep adjusting your heat. You adjust your heat uh, and high or low if your um, pressure gauge, if your uh, gauge goes too high, you know, higher than what you want it, then you turn your heat down. And if it goes, you know, low, which we don't want it to go lower, <laughs> then you keep it turned up. If that makes you comfortable to hear it go clank, 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 and you want to risk having a dry can or get heated and possibly crack and make it useless, then that will be on you. Most people, when they lose too much uh, pressure, like if they go, say, to 8 instead of, you know, to 10, then what they're going to do is just restart it. And you, yeah, your food cooks a little bit more, but you know, it's getting kind of fogged with some of that steam. Yeah, you'll have to recook it, but it'll still be safe to eat. And I'm about um, 39 minutes to go, and I'm having to adjust the heat pretty much every three or four minutes to keep it right in that sweet spot and that's kind of what you have to do um, sometimes I can go all the, like the whole time and never have to adjust it and other times I have to constantly monitor it that's the reason why you can't just walk away from the pressure can or once you turn it on you gotta stay right there until it finishes alright I've got 18 minutes left and I'm still fighting it the whole way Alright, so I'm at zero, so I'm going to take off my weighted gauge and let this thing vent. Now the rule of thumb for venting the steam is about two minutes and after that time, I mean, you're pretty much sitting at zero pressure. It's just going to get a little bit harder to take the lid off. Um, most people who have the um, All-Americans, because it's metal on metal, 
um, you oil the lid before you put it on, which, you know, mine is oiled already, so I didn't show that step. That makes it a little bit easier to get it off of there. All right, here I go. I'm gonna open it up. These actually aren't that hot, but the handle is. Twist. Make sure that the steam is away from your face when you lift it up. And if, at this point, some people will just leave the lid on. I will take it off. All right, let's get my jar grabbers and get at it. See that chicken fat all in there. Just make sure when you're feeling them pop or you hear them pop, <laughs> you don't drop the jar. I won't tell you who's dropped a jar that popped while I was holding it and walking it to my towel before. Um, not today, but uh, yeah, her name rhymes with Fernie Fat Faker. That one didn't sound too good. It's the one that went whoop instead of pop. So there's a good chance. 